see the parody I did on the help.
just use this today. I'll just use this. Just remind me if I get acting bad. Praise the Lord, church. Oh, come on. We can do a little better than that. I said praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Let's start with a hand clap of praise. Come on, lift up your hands. Let's get ready to worship and sing unto Jesus this morning. Hallelujah.
Come on, let's take this chance. Oh, we worship your name. We worship your name, Jesus. Oh, we're not just going through the motions this morning. We're here, honored and privileged to give the King of Kings glory and praise. Come on, step out of your comfort zone this morning and just give God some praise. Hallelujah.
Holy Ghost. Tell him what you want. If you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. If you want the Holy Ghost, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. If you need a blessing, tell him what you want. If you need a blessing, tell him what you want. If you need a blessing, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up. I was just waiting for you to call him up. Hallelujah. I was trying to give you time. Hallelujah. Amen. To call him up. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, we're living in a, 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 a very different time. I can honestly say that I've seen more churches now than what just churches everywhere, parking lots filled. I just wonder if if there's still a praying people. Not people that just attend a church because it's something to do socially. But I wonder if there's people praying and asking the Lord, Lord, would you just help us today? Would you just help my world today? Would you just help my city today? Would you heal my friend? Would you touch my brother? Would you just, would you just be God? That's all I'm asking. Just be yourself. Amen. But I'm glad that I attend this church because I know that I'm amongst a group of people that prays, that fasts, that studies, that seeks the face of God. Amen. My brother read a, um, gave a, read a great scripture this morning, our pastor. He read Nehemiah, and I'm going to read it again. I, I, I need to commit this to memory this afternoon, but um, it's a great verse. I'm going to read it for those that weren't here. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them, the enemy. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. It's not a time to turn. It's not a time to turn. It is truly a time to fight. And who are we fighting for? You know what that was? Everybody that was mentioned there, those are the people that you love. Your loved ones are worth fighting for. They're worth praying, seeking the face of God for, interceding, getting an intercessory prayer, losing track of the time, and losing track of the clock, and and just asking God to show up and be a mighty God. Amen. Fight for your brethren. Amen. We're so glad you're here today. A number of people are out. Amen. So we're glad that all of you that could make it today are here today. We're going to ask our ushers if you would come at this time. We're going to receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. Please give as the Lord has blessed you. Amen. Let's continue the spirit of worship here. Amen. Let's worship the Lord this morning as you give. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, raise your hands and worship. There is power in Every chain, break every.
every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in his mighty name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Every chain, break every chain, break every chain. How we know he's a chain break? There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up to break. Break every chain to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain.
Jesus. Break every chain, 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 break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. believe that give the Lord a shout of praise this morning in the house today hallelujah what a mighty God we serve what a mighty God we serve he's a chain breaking God a life changing God what a mighty God we serve if you love him today put your hands together and give the Lord some love this morning amen amen we gotta we're gonna have to do a little better than that y'all he's a good God to us Amen. Hallelujah. Appreciate, appreciate you being here this morning. We sure do. Sure appreciate the presence of the Lord. Good to have our sisters here visiting with us today. Lord bless y'all precious sisters being with us. Brother Billy, good to have you back with little baby Henry today. We appreciate y'all making it back. Amen. Amen. We've got some that couldn't make it today. Some are not feeling well. Well, we understand. So... We're here in the presence of the Lord. And let's not forget that. We're here in the presence of the Lord. We're not here just so we can say we've been to church today. I think we need to be here today to give the Lord worthy praise that that He deserves today. Amen. Amen. Give Him worship and praise. Hallelujah. You know, praise can be done afar off, but worship has to be done up close. Amen. Worship happens when you draw near to the Lord. And it's very personal. Amen. Praise kind of gets us into the place of worship. But but the Lord would, would have us to draw close to Him today. Amen. Every one of us. Come on, every one of us. We can all draw close to the Lord for ourselves today. We can we could enter into the presence of the Lord and go behind the veil where the where the sweet presence of God is, the Holy of Holies. God can meet needs in this place today. Amen. We just sung about it. We just sung about it. He's a chain-breaking God. Do I got a witness in the house? He's a life-changing God. He's a restoring God. He can do it, y'all. He can do it. Don't sell your God short. God can do it. Come on, don't sell him short. Whatever you need to be have done, God can do it for you. Amen. Amen. We appreciate the singing. Wonderful, wonderful, precious anointed singing. Well, I sure enjoyed all those songs. I was blessed by it. I, I love to be a part of the playing up here. Um, just lead us into the presence of the Lord. I liked, liked all three songs. Sure did. The first two songs really blessed me today third one too but those old timey songs they're just really something special about them still and I, I, I really just I really just appreciate all all of that amen amen well I feel like we need we're going to preach today for the book of second Corinthians chapter 5 and um, Pastor Dale Pastor Dale kind of led into our message here this morning that was a great great lesson that Pastor Dale taught today and I really appreciated that really really seriously appreciated the word of the Lord today bless me Dale has such a uh, incredible insight into the word of God 
and uh, he can bring it out like like nobody else. Just very, very anointed to teach the Word of God. I'm going to be preaching from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 and 15 today. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. Or that word unto could also be for or live for themselves. But live unto him or for him which died for them and rose again. Amen. Not live unto or for ourselves, but to live unto and for God. Amen. I think you got time for one more verse. Uh, Galatians chapter 3. One more passage here. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Galatians chapter 3. Begin reading at the first verse. Galatians chapter 3. Amen. No, I broke down the wrong verse. Anyways, it says, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above and not things below on the earth. If you're risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. So that's the wrong verse, Brother Bob. You can just, just forgive me for that. Amen. And so I want to talk to you about living unto ourselves. Living unto or for ourselves. Amen. Put your Bible down beside you, and I think we need to give the Lord one more appreciation and praise today. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. I figured that out, too, guys. It was Colossians 3. If you be be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Amen. And so uh, we're going to preach this with the help of the Lord today. You can be seated today. The Lord bless you, everybody. Amen. I want to address here for a moment uh, how how easy it is to fall into the trap, fall into the trap of living for ourselves and living selfish, stingy lives. Living for ourselves, not living for God, not living for the kingdom, not living to be a service to God, Others, brothers and sisters in the kingdom or the service of the Lord, how easy it is to fall into the trap of just living for ourselves. Amen. First, we're going to note here in this 15th verse, and Brother Bob, if you'll keep that back up there for us in the 15th verse. I want you to notice here that this first clause of this verse says, and that he died for all. And when that word says all, that word means all. He died for everybody. Red and yellow, black and white, rich and poor, up and in, or down and out. He died for everybody. Amen. This is an all-inclusive gospel. It's all-inclusive. Anybody that wants it can have it. Anybody that wants a life change can have a life change. Anybody wants to be set free can be set free. Anybody wants to be a part of the gospel and the kingdom of God and Get involved with the, th- the things of the Lord. You can be. This is, he died for all. That really should help us to know how important, not, not in a braggadocious way, but how important we are to the Lord. Listen, y'all, he gave his life for us here today. He shed his blood for us here today. He died on that cross for us here today. He died for all and every body. And that ought to tell you that you mean a little, at least a little bit of something to him. When the world says you don't mean nothing, I'm telling you, this tells us a whole lot more. We mean a whole lot more than what this world says we mean. We mean a lot to the Lord. 
We mean enough that he would come from heaven and die on that cross for us. He died for every single one of us. The devil tries to make you think you ain't nothing, you ain't, you, you'll never be anything, and you don't deserve anything, and you're not worthy of anything. I will tell you, he, he'll beat you down. But what God says, he will remind you that I love you. I gave my life for you. I died in that cross for you. You're why I came. You're why I sacrificed my blood, my life, because I love you that much. How many appreciates the love of the Lord today. The love of Jesus today. The love of a Savior today. And I said it before, this is an all-inclusive gospel. Amen. Canada and Africa and America and Mexico and China and all through the world, he died for everybody that's in this world. Did we deserve it? No. Were we worthy of it? No. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. While we were yet in our sins, he had a plan that involved the blood of Jesus and redemption and salvation and mercy and grace. I tell you, I celebrate mercy and grace today. I celebrate the blood of Jesus that washes our sins away, puts our names on the last book of life. Thank God for the blood and sacrifice of Jesus today. Anytime you get feeling a little bit low, a little bit down and out, you all just remind yourself and encourage yourself that he died for me. He loves me that much. I must mean something to him. Come on, somebody. We must mean something to him. Hallelujah. He died for all of us. And here's why. Here's why that he died, so that we could live not unto ourselves, but that we would live unto him or for him. The natural response of natural man is to live for themselves. Do it your way. You're the captain of your own ship. You call the shots. This, this is your only life. Live it up as best you can here. Live it for yourself. That's the natural tendency of mankind and flesh. But we have to get a revelation that we are not here just for ourselves. We're here because he died for us. Come on, somebody. And he died so we can live for him. I think we can fairly interpret this. He didn't die for us to live for ourselves. He died for us to live for him. Now, easy it is to fall in a trap of living for ourselves, going to our jobs and fulfilling career and, and making money and, and, and all the pursuits of life. How easy it is to fall in the trap of doing it our way, in my way, and what I want. It doesn't matter what the Bible says or what God says. All that matters. We're living in a world now that all that really matters to the world is what I want. It's the most selfish generation ever to live on this earth. And that's why we're so consumed with self. And he talked about it today, I and me and mine. It was, it was a confirmation of the message here today. It was, it's all about us and my family and my career and my money and my, and my life. When we get a revelation truly of this, we, we understand that he died for us, not so we can live just for ourselves, but he died so we can live for him an overcoming life, a godly life, a holy life, a conquering life, a victorious life. We can live a life for Jesus Christ. If you believe that, shout amen here today. One of the most pitiful things we have today is people living just for themselves. Not no concern about others, no concern about the kingdom of God, no concern about the church anymore, no concern about the, the, the service and, and the work of the Lord sacrificial giving, living a, a living, being a, a testimony, a living sacrifice. It, it, it's almost like th those words are just falling on deaf ears today when, when the word of God says that we should be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, not, come on, y'all, not among each other, an acceptable offering to the Lord. He died for us, y'all, so we can live for him, not for ourselves, not for our career, not for our bank account, but we live for Jesus. We live for him. We die for him. We serve him. We love him. It's all about 
are living for the Lord. And when you can nail that down, it takes all the pressure off you in the whole world. Because I'm not worried about my career if I'm living Brother Billy for God. He'll take care of all that. I'm not worried about my, my money in my bank account. I'm not worried about my family. Because when I live for him, he's got all that took care of. I'm not worried about making ends meet and trying to survive. I'm not worried about that because I'm living for God. <laughs> and he knows my everyday needs. Come on, he puts clothes on our back, food in our cupboards. He gives us a car to drive. We got health in our bodies. Takes all the pressure off. There is no pressure to do this myself. I have a heavenly father that loves me and provides for me and makes a way where there's no way. He opens doors and makes things happen. I can never make happen. And so seeing that he died for all, it's easy for us to live for him. It's not something that we have to force ourselves to do. I'm telling you, if it's a force and if it's compulsory on us, and if we feel like we're serving him out of obligation, we've missed the whole thing. It ought to be something that spontaneous flows from us. I get to be a part of the kingdom. I get to serve the master. I get to live for Jesus. I get to come to church. I get to be a blessing. I get to serve my brother. I get to bless my sister. I get to do these things. Not forced to, not made to. I get to be a blessing to somebody. It's called living for him. It's not something we should force ourselves to do. I shouldn't have to make myself love my brother. Should be something natural about it when I'm converted, when I'm spirit-filled, when I'm right with the Lord. Should be something natural that I love my sister. I, 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 I value my sister. I appreciate my sister. I esteem my sister highly. Don't know the Bible says esteem one another above ourselves? Now, you can't do that in the flesh because it's all about us in the flesh. You can't do that, but in the spirit and walking with God and with a right heart and a cleansed heart and spirit, you can prefer your brother or sister above yourself. i got to preach this today. I'm going to tell you, if my heart's right with God, if my spirit's right, I can want Brother Melvin blessed more than I'm blessed. I can sincerely, honestly say, I want him blessed more than I'm blessed. And we can say it about the church across town. I want them to have revival. It's not competition among churches. It's not our church and their church. There is just one church, and it's the blood-bought church of Jesus Christ. And if they have revival, we have revival. And if they're growing, we're growing. And if he's blessed, I'm blessed. And if she's blessed, you're blessed. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I know the natural response is, well, they got a new car. I wish I could get one. But you know what? That's a carnal response. That's how the world operates. But in the spirit, we should say, thank God for their new car. Thank God for the brother's revival across town. Thank God he got a raise on his job. Thank God he got a blessing. That's the right spirit, y'all. That's living for the kingdom. That's living for God, not ourselves, but that is living for unto the Lord. How easy it is to kind of get defensive, defend our own turf, defend our own position. And I've got, I'm going to be right whether, no matter what it matters, no matter what effect or, listen, we don't always have to just be right. I can prefer my brother when it seems like it's more natural for me to want the blessing. I can prefer my brother or my sister. It's, it, that, that's, the, that's the real flow of the Holy converted, changed life that, could have, that we can want the best for you and each other 
and the kingdom of God and the church. That's living for the kingdom of God. That's living. For, that's not living for ourselves or undo ourselves. That's not selfishness or doing it my way, my way or the highway. No, it's not your way or the highway. It's his way. Come on. It's his way that matters. It's his word that matters. It's his directives and dictate that really matters the most. We're living in a world consumed with self right now. People have died taking selfie pictures of themselves. Falling off cliffs. Please, help me with that. It's not all about us. You got to take a picture of yourself, knock yourself out. But don't fall off the cliff doing it. I'd rather take a picture of Brother Melvin than take a picture of myself. He ain't no better looking than I am, though. I don't know if my, my phone can survive that. It's not, about, it's not all about us. It's, not, it's Sister Nelly. It's me having compassion, love for you, concern for you. My sister in the Lord. It's about me loving brother. It's... It, I read this yesterday, uh, two days ago, I think it was. I was reading through John, the Gospel of John. And Jesus says, greater love have no man than this. And then he says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have loved one for another. You can't do that like that and live for yourself only. But when you've had a conversion, when something's changed your life, it'll change the way you live your life. And you will truly want good for others. You want to benefit the kingdom. You want to serve the body of Christ. You want to bless somebody and help somebody and be a light for somebody and share with somebody. You want to be a part of the kingdom of God and his work. But you can't do that living for yourself. Somebody praise him here right now for a little bit. Amen. Come on, give me a little more praise. Can't do it for yourself. Can't do it living by yourself. God, do it living for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That we should not live unto ourselves. This world doesn't evolve around me. Newsflash, not, a, not around you either. I'll tell you, I'll take it a step further. The, the world doesn't revolve around this church or this ministry. Or you and your family. We need, we need a revelation. This is not all about us. It's about the kingdom of God. What can we do to help the kingdom? What can we do to be a blessing to somebody? What can we do to live for the Lord? And think about this verse a lot, Brother, Brother Chris. It's where Jesus said, you're bought with a price. You're not your own. We can't, we can't live we can't live like we should if we're living just for ourselves because, number one, we've been bought with a price. We're not our own. We belong to him. That's why it says, therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which is the Lord's. Give God glory. Give God honor by your lifestyle, by your giving, your loving, living, your serving. Give God honor and glory by all of that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We live unto ourselves, but it, it's, it's out of selfishness, and greed, and, and, and things, stinginess about us. I think about some examples in the Bible. There was a guy that had all those barns, and the Bible said he was blessed greatly with, with, with very much prosperity. And he, out, he outgrew the barns, and the, the crops were so big and so great that he outgrew the barns. I said, this is what I'll do. He said, I'll tear my barns down. Now build bigger barns because I have got no places to bestow all of my goods. He said, I'll tear them down and I'll build, a, build bigger barns. And the Lord said, thou fool, don't you know this night your soul is going to be required of you and what will you do with all the things that you've got? In other words, his barns were more important and his prosperity and his own dimension, his own place and status was more important than sharing and blessing and helping because it was all about him. He was living for himself. But the Lord says that ain't the way to be. He says, it, he says our life does not consist in all the things we possess for ourselves. Then the little guy, the rich young ruler, y'all know the story. 
He comes running to Jesus. What have I got to do to be inherit eternal life? The Lord says, keep the commandments. He said, I've done all those things. But the Lord knew. I like one, one, one of the gospels said, Sister Debbie. It said he beheld him and loved him. He loved him. And that's always been touching to me. Because Jesus could have said it arrogantly. He could have said it like, like I'm, I'm going to really nail you with this. But it says beheld him and he loved him. And he told him to go sell the things that he had. And give it away and come follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. The Bible says he went away sorrowful because he had great possessions. It was all about him. It's all about his, his life, his position, all about his accumulating of things, all about his status. And so he left that encounter with the Lord worse than he came to begin with because it was, he was living for himself. And if this message here can touch three or four of y'all today, where we can make a decision. I'm not just going to live for myself. I'm going to live for the Lord. I'm going to live for Him. Live, die, sink, or swim. Whatever it costs, I'm going to live for Him. Whatever price I have to pay, I'm going to live for Him. Jesus said, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. They thought they, really, they David, good to see you, man. They sold their boats, man. They, they, they left their nets on the, on the seashore there. And they went and followed the master. And he said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And they were men of livelihood. They were men of means, at least for business people. And they, they left it all on the, on the seashore there. And they went and followed the master to their very deaths in this life. But I'm telling you, they reaped benefits and rewards that none of us even have a comprehension of. Because it wasn't all about them living. Their, it was about them living the God life, the Jesus life, the holy life. And the whole thing changed the whole world. Because they just concluded, this is not just about me. This is about some others. And they preached the gospel. And they gave, it, gave their lives for it. We see it all through the scriptures. We, Paul, Paul, the great apostle, was probably maybe the most educated man in the whole, of the whole Bible. But he just laid it all on the line. He said, he says, I'll just count it as dung that I may win Christ. He says, it means nothing to me. My education, all that I've learned, all the, all the uh, acumen that I have, all the attainments I've got, it means nothing to me. He says, but I've got to win Christ. And he laid it all down. He left it all there on the, on the ground. And he walked away from it that day. And he said, I've got to serve the Lord. Woe to me if I preach not the gospel. I'm going to give him my life. He said, I'm going to die for him. I'll live for him. And I'll die for him. Because that's really what it's up. Come on, y'all. I'm saying, if we can live for ourselves, we can live for him. If we can live for ourselves, do it our way, we can do it his way. But you got to make a declaration and kind of like draw a line in the sand. I'm not going to be the same way I've always been. I'm not going to be selfish. I'm not rebuking anybody, but if you're selfish, I'm rebuking you. If you're stingy, this, you could just take this as a rebuke. If it's all about you, you do the math. But the Holy Ghost got our attention by letting us know this is not just about us. It's not about me, my four, and no more. There's a lost city here that needs to hear the gospel. There are people just outside the door, door of this church that know nothing about this glorious apostolic truth. There are people you work with every day, maybe neighbors, co-workers, loved ones, family, that know nothing about this glorious, glorious truth. And the problem is they'll never know anything about it simply because we live too much just for ourselves. I guess it's amen or oh me, right? But if some of us would have a conversion, and we would make it about him instead of us, and quit taking selfies and let's start taking group pictures, Hallelujah. Pretty simple. Y'all mad at me about selfies now? Good, I'm going to keep preaching about them. It's not, it's not a selfie world. This is a world that he paid his, all gave all his life for. He so loved the world that he gave all his only, that's what it's about. 
And then we want to make it about us and, and, and what we, how far we get in and how far we go and all the things we have. Y'all, that is not God's will. But God's will is that we would lay our life down on the line and say, here it is, Lord. It may not be much, God, but it's for you here anyhow. And I'll live for you. And I'll love to serve you. And I'll love to give to the kingdom. And I'll love to bless somebody. I'll love to help somebody. I'm going to take a group picture. I'm going to be a part of a team. Not just about me, but it's about the team and everybody else. Y'all do know there's no letter I in the word team, right? It's a team. It's a family of God. It's each other. It's serving when people are not watching us serve. It's giving when somebody's not seeing how much you give. It's praying and, and being, a, being a blessing and, and, and being compassionate and concerned about a lost world when nobody's patting you on the back and nobody's making note of it and nobody's recognizing that. It's about what we do if for the kingdom of God that we can change this world, but we can't do it by living for ourselves and selfish living and stingy living and being just about, let's get this thing turned around. Let's live for God like we should. Come on, somebody. Let's get a revelation. We're here for him. We're here for him. We're here to, to be a blessing. We're going to just, we're, everywhere we go, we're going to just pollinate. We're just going to spread over. We're going to overflow. We're going to give out. going to give out life. Paul said some are a savor of death unto death. Some are a savor of life unto life. In other words, some give death, some give life. What do y'all say we give life today? Let, let's, let's, let's give compassion today. Let's, let's give service today. Let's give this. It's more blessed to give than receive. Let's be a part of something bigger than us. You know the smallest people in the world are people that's all about themselves? Nebuchadnezzar said, is this not mighty Babylon that I built? Is this not my, my, my nation? Is this not the kingdom that I built with my own hand? And when the word was still in his mouth, God put him down on the ground and he crawled like an animal for seven years. His fingernails grew out like an animal. His hair grew long and dew fell on him from the sky because he said, is this not what I did myself? I'm telling y'all, it's a very dangerous place to be. Y'all know the very first sin that I could see in the Bible was the sin of pride. It was where Lucifer said, I'm going to ascend to the head. I'm going to ascend up to the top of the throne. Lucifer said, I'm going to be greater than the most high. I'm going to climb. I'm going to be. I'm going to do. Listen, if it's all about us, y'all, that is the spirit of Lucifer. Y'all still love me? If it's all about us and my family. In my career, in my ministry, y'all very seldom ever hear me refer to this as my ministry because I don't say that. This is his ministry. This is not my church. This is his church. This is our, as the family of God, this is our church. I don't tell. I hear pastors talk all the time. Brother Billy, all the time pastors say, well, my church is going through this or my church is going through that or it might, they, they go to my church. I don't like that kind of talk because it's not my church. It's the Lord's church. It's the kingdom of God's faith. Come on. We are part of the body of Christ, not about my church or my ministry. It's about living for him, y'all. Come on, somebody. It's about living for Jesus Christ. I know they don't mean wrong by saying that, but it's just to me, it's a matter of nomenclature. I'm just careful with the use of the words. story I'll tell you quickly Pastor Lonnie Treadway was in a building they were just a short version one of our great pastors in Texas and, and, and they had run into financial trouble in the church great pastor great church they run into financial struggles at the church and uh, they were very very desperately needing the Lord's help and um, he had went to went to prayer and uh, he, he had uh, I guess a 
really good prayer meeting with the Lord. And, um, then, then he just come to the conclusion that it wasn't, it wasn't his personal church. It was the Lord's church. It was his work. And he just left it in the hands of the Lord. It's God's work, God's church. And God moved in such a miraculous way. He had gone out of town for a weekend just to kind of, I, I guess, just to escape maybe for a weekend, a few days to get away. Well, he, he called back about the finances and the offering that had come in, and the church secretary told him, you're not going to believe what's happened. And, and they, had, they had a miracle offering of many thousands of dollars while this brother was away on vacation, pretty much washing his hands and really not knowing what to do. But God took over and showed Pastor Treadway that that was his church and not Pastor Treadway's church. But we can come to the conclusion that this is not all about us. It's about God. And I know, I know that's a kind of a cliche. As a matter of fact, we even have it on our pen. Brother Bob did up some beautiful pens probably 15, 12 years ago. We have it on there. It's all about him. I know it's a cliche. But I'm not preaching that cliche today. I'm just telling you, it really is all about him. Our giving, our living, our serving, our partnership with each other, our connectedness to each other, red and yellow, black and white, good looking, ugly. It's all about each other. Amen. We could we nail that down. There's no stop in this church. Y'all hear me? Thank you for three and a half amens. We nail that down. Elders and young people and preachers and saints and sound men and musicians and ushers and deacons. Come on, somebody. And church cleaners and song leaders and people sitting in our back pew with folks sitting on the front. We nail that down, baby. There's no stopping the church that can get together in Jesus' name. Give him one more mighty praise in the house here today. Come on, give him some high praise. Hallelujah. Somebody says, I don't have much to offer. But you know what? What you can offer can go a whole lot further combined with what she can offer. Hallelujah. And I can't do much, but together, together, we can do unmeasurable things for the kingdom of God. But the key word is living not for ourselves. Don't get the spirit of this world. I rebuke that spirit. That's a selfish, degenerate, wicked, evil spirit. It's not all about us. We're going to do it for the kingdom. We come to church not just for ourselves. We come for the kingdom. We give not just for ourselves. We give for the kingdom. We worship not just for ourselves. We, we worship for the kingdom. We sacrifice not just for ourselves, but we're doing it because the Bible said to give ourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, because it's for the kingdom of God. And if we could just have a conversion of our thinking, that we think kingdom-minded and we, we have service, and it's not a sacrifice for me. It's not a sacrifice for me to help. It's not, it's, it doesn't take nothing out of my it's no effort at all to say, Mom, you look beautiful today. It's no effort at all to say, You're such a, Sister Haynes, you're such a blessing to the kingdom of God. Thank you for what you're doing. There's no, nothing that costs me for that for you. Brother Michael's been doing probably our finances for eight or ten years, maybe. He does it sacrificially, hours and hours and hours. He's not been paid a dime. He's just, it's all sacrifice, it's all, all giving of himself. Somebody says, I could never do that. Well, you never get the blessing he's got. I could never sacrifice like that. Well, you, you could if, you, if your heart was maybe where it needed to be. But he doesn't look, have a handout looking for, and we, we've cried and wept together. I've had to encourage him, he's had to encourage me. We have been through, you know what, and back. We have been there and back. But God's faithful. We nailed down a long time ago. It ain't about us. It's not just about Victor Tabernacle. 
It's about the kingdom of God and my brothers and this city and a lost world and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's preach this thing. Let's live this thing. Let's do this thing in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. We can do this together, not just ourselves, but together we can get the job done. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Can't do it by yourself. I don't care how good you can preach. Can't do it by yourself. You bet me a millionaire, but you can't give it all by yourself. But when we come together, and we realize it's for the kingdom of God. We should live. Listen, y'all, this is what, this what the Lord got my attention with. It's what he showed me in this verse, Brother Melvin, that we should not live unto ourselves. That got my attention. Because it's so easy to do. Just get caught up. Just get caught up. Just go the way of the world. Go act how it acts. Live like it. Just do. Think. But that's, that's not of the Lord. He says, but rather, look, but live ourselves unto him which died for us and rose again. And I'll try to close. But it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a sacrifice on our part to give our all. Listen, I know that didn't go over too good, but it's the truth. It shouldn't be a sacrifice to give our all. Y'all want scripture text for that? Jesus said, if you don't, you got to love me with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. You got to do it. You can't do this thing halfway. You can't just, you can't just live for God a half, halfway in and halfway out. Those are the most miserable people in the whole world. I've never known people more miserable than people that are half in church and half out of church. My God, do one or the other. I suggest you get all the way in the church. And let's make it about God and his work and each other. Because I'll tell you this, when you're serving others, you're serving the kingdom of God. When you're blessing somebody, you're blessing the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But here's what we're going to do, y'all. We're going to make a declaration. I'm going to do better about the kingdom of God. I'm going to do better about serving the kingdom. Thank you for all three or four, y'all. We're going to do it, y'all. We're going to do it as a church family. We're going to do better about serving the kingdom of God. It's not just about my family. It's not just about me and my little group. This is about the body of Christ. And when one member of the body suffers, we all suffer. And when one is strong, we're strong. And when one's growing, we're growing. And one's blessed, we're blessed. And you, I'll tell you how to check your spirit real quick. This will, this will tell you about yourself. If you're jealous and envious over some of your brothers and sisters, something's wrong in Denmark somewhere. Something's wrong. Not on their end, it's on your end. If we make past judgment and critical things whenever we ought to be rejoicing. Rejoice with those that rejoice. Brother Tally, weep with those that weep. Or rejoice with those that rejoice. I rejoice in your health, brother. I rejoice in your musicianship, brother. I rejoice in your singing, brother. When he's singing, I'm getting blessed. When he's dancing, I'm getting blessed. When they're blessed financially, I'm getting blessed. Come on, y'all. That is kingdom living and kingdom thinking in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Sister Debbie got prayed for this past week. I know vividly what happened. The power of God moved and fell on this altar. We prayed for her. The Holy Ghost touched her. I felt it when it left my body, the power of God. And it went right straight through her. She went to the doctor this past week. The doctor said, Debbie, you're fine. There is no trouble. There is no issue. There is nothing going on. You're well. You're well. You're well. He said, come back in six months. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And that's each one of us can have something to do for the kingdom like that. Whether it's give an offering or make a phone call or, or to encourage, teach a Bible study to somebody. Get, in, get involved with a fellowship group. Get involved with the church and spread yourself out and pollinate across lines 
and be a blessing to somebody. Let's stand to our feet and let's lift our hands and let's give him praise in the house right now. Lift your hands. Lift your hands in his presence. I want you to do that. Come on, lift your hands in his presence, Father. Lamb of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If I could do one more thing, God, for the kingdom, I ask you, Lord, to help me to do it. If I could be more of a blessing, Lord, help me to be more of a blessing. God, if I can do some, make a difference in somebody, yet, God, yet in their life, God, help us to do that. In the name of the Lord of hosts, God, I pray, God, that we can make a difference somehow, some way. Not through living unto ourselves, not through selfishness, but through serving and giving and loving and compassion and concern and sympathy, God. Love for brothers and sisters. Love for a lost world. Love, 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 God. For needy people. Love for lost people. Love for sinners. Hallelujah. God, I pray right now for a fresh baptism of the spirit of serving God and living and giving God upon the people. God, let the people receive, God, a fresh baptism, God, of living unto you, God, a fresh baptism and desire, God, about living their lives for the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke selfishness and stinginess. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke those things. And God, we, we speak, God, we speak your Holy Ghost, God, to touch it and just to raise up a people, God, that's concerned for kingdom and, and loves kingdom, God, and thinks about your work and thinks about your cause and loves this world. We, we call them out and forth in Jesus' name. We call them forth today in the name of Jesus. Y'all think it'd be appropriate for me to say this. If we've been wrong with this, if we've made it about ourselves, we should repent over that. Amen. We should repent over that. If it's been about us and our family, that's all it's about, or our little assembly here, and that's all it's about, we should repent over that. Amen. Brother Billy and Savannah got a little baby new, little baby back there, a little Henry Cruz Phillips. Amen. And I rejoice with them. I mean, I rejoice. That baby, that baby in a sense is a miracle because she was in a very terrible car accident. And that baby could have been taken out during that car accident. But God protected her and that baby. And here he is today in the house of God two Sundays in a row. And we're celebrating victory for them. I celebrate Debbie's victory. I celebrate, I celebrate Jeffrey and Sister Maxwell, Natalie, I celebrate Chris and Kimberly, Brother Billy and Lisa, David, I celebrate you. We're all, we're all doing this together. I know David and I, we, 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 we don't look just alike, but we're brothers. We're family. He died for all. Come on, y'all. He died for all. He died for all. Rich and poor, ugly and beautiful. He died for all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Get over beside somebody. I want you to pray this prayer, then we'll close. Get beside somebody. Come on up here, Brother Melvin. I'm going to pray with you. Come on. Y'all get somebody. Thank you, God, that we're all part of the same team today. Thank you, God, that we're together in this. Thank you that it's not all about me, God. It's not just about me or my family or my own kids or my own billfold. Thank you, God, that it's not just about me, but you died for all so we can live for you. You rose again, Lord, so we can live for you, not unto ourselves, not selfishly, not stingily, but live and give. Hallelujah. And be a part of the kingdom and the family of God. Ah, hallelujah. We don't live unto ourselves. We don't live unto ourselves. We live 
unto the Lord. And we live unto the Lord with each other. Oh, we live unto the Lord with each other. We live unto the Lord with each other. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, praise your name, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for the service today. Thank you for the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, for sweet people. Let's be dismissed in prayer, everybody. Thank you, Lord, for touching us, Lord, and helping us. Thank you for moving, God. Thank you for the Word, God, that comes to us and helps us, God, to be stronger. Hallelujah. Helps us, God, to be more a part of the things of God. Thank you, God, for talking to us, loving on us today. Thank you for God reaching down your precious hand, God, and, and touching us once again in the tabernacle, Lord. Thank you for victory, God, for my brothers and my sisters today. Thank you for the healings, God. Thank you for the promotions, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the breakthroughs that they're having. Thank you, Lord, for the doors you're opening. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We don't live like the guy with the barns, Lord. We're willing to give. We don't live like the rich young ruler, God. We're willing to understand it's not all about our stuff. But it's about the things of God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Amen. Pastor Dale, come on up here a second, please. Come on up here. We'll let you... Thank you, Lord Jesus, for an opportunity, Lord, to come to your house to hear the word of God as it needs to be delivered to this time, to this age that we're standing, Lord, and living in. I'm praying, God, right now that you'll allow us to have a new revelation. You said you reveal new things, God. Reveal those things to us, God, and help us to see that it's not about us, that it's about others, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help this church to grow spiritually, Lord, physically. Help our city to grow Lord, we're praying right now special blessings on all of your people that are here today. Pour out blessings on them, Lord, that they can't contain. Pour so many on them, Lord, that they can't even count them, Lord. Let them be numerous, God. Let them be all types and all divers types of blessings on them. And we'll give you the highest praise. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all fellowship a while. We'll see y'all back Wednesday night. Hey y'all. Hey y'all look at the y'all just for a second. Look at the screen. Isn't Sister Leslie real pretty in that picture there? That, that's, that's pretty cool right there.
Thank you. 